So moving on to additional supplements. So there are certainly things, I mean, a lot of people think, oh, as soon as you're talking about supplements, you're talking, oh, it's on steroids and all the rest of it. It's like, no, really, really not. None of this is sort of steroids at all. Um, I'm completely natural, don't worry, mum, don't worry, I'm not taking steroids. Um, and I never will, it's just not in my um, goals. But there are definitely some natural supplements or just ways that you get natural things that you want in your body that maybe you find it difficult just to get them into your diet. So number one that I'd always recommend, there's only a few. I don't think people, some people go absolutely nuts on supplements and I think it's not necessary personally. If you've got a reasonable diet, you probably don't really need to take that many. I'd say I do, but I very much eat to get to my macros. Um, I wouldn't say, you know, there's as much maybe veg in my diet or fruit in my diet as there could be, etc. It's literally like some days I'll just have a plate of chicken with a little bit of sauce on it and that's it. No rice, no nothing with it, no veg. So for me, I feel like they probably have a couple more supplements in my diet than some others might. So number one, without doubt, protein shakes. Now, I just mentioned this earlier, but the number one reason that I feel that they need to be, well, not need to be, but it helps to have them in your diet is that, you know, we're busy people, you probably work full time, um, and you probably don't have time to be, you know, unless you've got a significant amount of time on your hands to be meal prepping at the start of the week and having six meals a day all sort of nicely lined out, etc., etc. that probably isn't really realistic or maybe it is but you just spend all your free time cooking and eating personally i don't want that to be the case so for me to be able to get the amount of protein in my diet without just eating endless cans of tuna which would make me want to kill myself um i need to have protein shakes in my diet and you can get ones that are more carby if you're bulking have more carbs in them and you can get other ones that are just like whey lean protein um for me what i've been actually drinking at the moment i think i've got one behind here actually so just this diet fuel from USN. USN is a very reputable brand in the um, fitness industry. Always go with a reputable brand because otherwise you get some real rubbish and there's a lot of companies out there that are looking to make a fast buck and put all sorts of terrible things in protein shakes that just shouldn't be in there. Um, or they cut it like some have actually cut with flour and sawdust. It's a bit like the drug trade. It's really bad. So go always go with a reputable brand like USN, My Protein, any of those big names. But this is actually, I got these from Pound World, and they are, I mean, they're brilliant macros on them. So 27.4 protein for the bottle, carbs are 12.5, and fats like nothing, 0.3 grams. And these are obviously a pound a go, which is really good. In fact, in my gym, they sell them as well, and they're £2.50 a go. So I tend to have one or two of these a day. And they really taste really nice as well. It's like this one, strawberry and cream, and it tastes really, really good. So definitely maybe look at that if you're looking to diet. If I was bulking, I'd probably want something with a bit higher carbs in it, but those are brilliant. So I just hope Panwell keeps doing them. Number two will be um, creatine. So creatine is definitely something. If you're a power lifter or, you know, especially if you're strength orientated, God, that's a terribly, especially if you're power orientated or, you know, explosive in any sport that you're doing. Creatine is massive, massively, massively help, helpful. If you think about, I mean, I'm not going to go into too much of the science of it, but it basically, if you have more creatine in your diet, then you can produce more power as you're able to access the PCR energy system, which is basically lasts for no more than sort of well, a few seconds, really. But it's the predominant pathway that sprinters will be using. And it's just like really quick, explosive power. All your muscle fibers fire really, really quickly, but it's really, really limited. So in terms of like for me, for benching, squatting, deadlifting, especially on like, you know, when I'm doing low volume, but like high power, um, then it really, really helps me in terms of performance. Also, one other side note on it is that um, creatine actually, once your muscles are loaded, it will help you to actually re retain maybe a little bit more um, water in your muscles. So it'll draw some of the uh, water out of your bloodstream and into your muscles which will have the effect of making your muscles look fuller and bigger. Um, it's only mar marginal, but it's a nice little maybe slot a side note, especially if you're looking to gain muscle and just get a bit bigger. So I definitely recommend that. About three grams a day. Um, 
a lot of companies suggest five or more. I don't go along those lines. It's too much. They're just trying to make more money out of you. Three grams is plenty. Um, and there are absolutely there are so many studies to suggest that there's just no side effects with taking creatine in the slightest. You know, it's completely, it's a naturally occurring substance in your body. It's fine. So that's number two. Number three is going to be cod liver oil. My writing is getting progressively worse. Cod liver oil, and you can get them again. I've got mine from Poundland. I think I've got 30 capsules for a quid, one a day. Uh, basically, all it does, especially for me, for things like squatting, etc., uh, it lubricates your joints. So it just makes you feel a little bit looser um, and a bit less stiff in, in your joints. So I definitely recommend that. Seeing it's so cheap as well, why wouldn't you take it? Um, four is, and this is mainly for me, multivitamins. God, really is getting poor. Can you guys even, I hope you can read that. Uh, so the reason I take these is that basically I probably don't have enough fruit and veg in my diet. Um, and it just helps me to um, just get the necessary vitamins in my diet. And it's really strange actually, because I mean, I felt a little bit run down before Christmas, in fact, quite run down before Christmas. Um, but I started taking these again, so I ran out and started taking them, felt a lot better. And then went home, left my multivitamins at, um, back in Watford. Um, went back to Bournemouth for you know, a week between Christmas and New Year. And immediately started feeling run down once I stopped taking them. Um, really, I think it's probably more coincidental than anything else, but I definitely think it helps. Well, obviously vitamins help with your health, and I think it made a bit of a difference to me. Came back here, started taking them again, and I feel good again. Well, pretty good. Got a little bit of the sniffles, but I'm fine, really. Um, and then number five is, and this is one that's maybe a bit for debate, caffeine. Well, I'll say maybe a bit for debate. I mean, I think there's a limit to how much caffeine you should be taking in each day. I mean, in the past, uh, am I not this job I'm at now, but one that I had in the past, I was probably having about five or six coffees a day. Um, well actually probably even before lunchtime and they got to a point where I started having palpitations and really started feeling not very good um, the problem was basically my body got so used to the amount of caffeine I was taking in I was having to take in more and more and more and my tolerance so high um, to be able to get that effect of feeling awake which is the main reason I was taking it um, so what I had to do was basically kind of cut out all the caffeine for pretty much a couple of months I just basically didn't drink any coffee or have any energy drinks or anything like that and I drank shed loads of water. And it's amazing the power of water. I mean, I think it's, you know, obviously everyone drinks it and we all feel thirsty, but if you try and drink, and there's a lot of YouTube videos out there about, you know, the benefits of drinking a gallon of water a day, um, which is like four or five liters or something. Um, might be even more than that, I'm not sure. But there are a lot of benefits from drinking plenty of water and that, for me, you know, when I feel like my caffeine is going up too high, then I start to drink more water as, you know, the effects of that can, it makes you feel more awake. Your body's, you know, hydrated, it, it, it clears up your skin. Um, you know, there's just so many benefits. You might need to go to the toilet a little bit more. But there's so many benefits to drinking plenty of water. Um, that in terms of it keeping you awake, you probably don't need caffeine so much if you get into a routine of drinking plenty of water. The reason I advocate at caffeine more than anything, though, is to kind of put you, make that focus, especially going into a workout or something, give you that focus that you want in the gym. And also caffeine, because it is a stimulant, will stimulate fat loss to a certain degree. It will help to burn some fats because it will just make your metabolism rise up slightly higher from having more caffeine in your diet. So I recommend you maybe having a couple of cups of coffee in your day. Um, or an energy drink or two, well maybe not two, maybe at the most one a day. Um, and just keep it at a, you know, a sensible level of caffeine in your diet. Um, and then obviously your tolerance won't go so high that, you know, it's detrimental to your health. So those are the big five for me that I think everybody really should be taking in, whether it's a supplement or naturally, like finding it naturally in the food that you're taking, uh, intaking. But I think three, you know, those are all big, big ones for me. So the final topic that I want to cover in this um, diet two-part episode 
um, or two part written blog, should I call it, is alcohol on a diet and the myths surrounding it on a diet. I'm really struggling with writing today. Maybe it's the angle. So, a lot of people, or there's a lot of, you know, YouTubers, etc., or just general sort of, not even bro science, but just people sort of say, oh yeah, you know, alcohol's the devil when you're on a diet, you can't be drinking alcohol. And to be honest, yes, that is true on a, to a certain degree, but I mean, I'm, you know, I enjoy a gin and tonic, and even though I'm dieting, I'm still probably going to have a gin and tonic now and again. Um, so what I would say is you can be sensible with the alcohol that you're ingesting if you're on a diet. So the big problems are, and I've just got a, a, a website open here, it's actually an, an article from the Telegraph about calories in different, um, in different types of alcohol, is that obviously it's kind of empty calories, there are no protein, fats or carbs in there, but there are calories in them. So if we go through and just kind of work out you know, say you're on a you're on a Friday night and you're gonna have, you know, it's after work, you sort of celebrate it's the weekend or whatever, go for a few drinks with some colleagues or friends. So I say let's just go and say you're gonna have four drinks that evening. Alright, so you're gonna have four drinks. And let's work out whatever you're on. So if you're having four drinks and you're on a la large glasses of wine for every single one of those drinks, so a 250ml glass of wine. wine and the number of calories in that will be 228 and now this will obviously fluctuate depending on whether it's red or white or Merlot, Cabernet, so I'm sure they're all slightly different but ballpark is 228 calories so if you're going to have four of those it's coming up for let's round it and call it well let's call it 900 calories So that would mean for me, if I'm cutting, I would only have 1,500 calories to play with in terms of getting on board as much of this as possible, my, my proteins, fats and carbs. Now for me, if I'm drinking, protein never ever gets sacrificed, ever. So I would still be having my... Um, so I'm on a cut, my protein is going to be 211 grams of protein, as we've already talked about, 844 cows protein, which means I then only have, so 844, actually I haven't got this in front of me, so I'm going to have to do it with my head, 666 cows left to get on board my fats and carbs. For me, obviously, fat is still important in the diet. I want to get make sure I'm still getting on at least the 450 grams of fat. Um, no, sorry, 450 grams of fat. Jeez, that seems a bit high, doesn't it? <laughs> Four, yeah, so 450 calories of fat, which is still 50 grams of fat a day. So that puts me in a nice, healthy range. It's still on the low side, but it still puts me in a nice, healthy range. So I'm going to say 450 cows fat. All right, and that then leaves me, if I take that off from the 666, that then leaves me 216 calories of carbs for the day, which divided by four is 54, I believe. So 54 grams of carb. So that's obviously hideously low compared to what we would have been taking on, which is 269 grams. So you're probably going to feel pretty rough um, if you're only you know, taking on this amount of carbohydrates in a day. You're probably going to feel pretty tired. The alcohol is going to hit you pretty damn quick as well. But if you're going to stick to your diet and have that number of calories, then you're going to forego your carbs. That's the amount that you're going to get to have after four glasses of wine. So that's the problem with what with alcohol really. 
Um, if we look at beer, um, so you're going to have four pints of beer. The beer inside is 180 calories. Um, so again, if you have four pints, say it's up around about 750 um, calories for you know for four pints. So not quite as much as the wine is going to be. So the four large glasses of wine. Um, but it's still blooming high and you maybe have around about 70 or 80 grams of, of um, carbs for the day. So you're still going to feel pretty rough. Now, if we look at spirits. So this is where I think, to be honest, for me, gin and tonic is the only drink I'm allowing myself to have. So actually, I'm going to leave that up there. I'm going to put this down here as just a, a reference. I'm not going to go through all this again. But... If I'm having, um, well, it says the average spirit in this article, whether it's whiskey, vodka, etc., is around about for a 25 mil shot, an average shot is 64 calories for an average shot. So that is almost a quarter of what a glass of wine would be. So for me, if I had gin, actually gin slightly lower, it's around about 50 calories. Um, for a shot. So if I had four single gins and slimline tonic, so obviously no calories in the slimline tonic, um, that will be 200 calories, um, which would still leave me 2,200 um, calories, even on my cut. So even though I've gone out and I've enjoyed myself, I've had four drinks with some, uh, some of the lads or whatever, <laughs> then I'm still going to have 2,200 calories and it basically then means I'm going to be cutting out 50 grams of carbohydrates, so 200 calories divided by four, 50 grams of carbohydrates, which will basically then leave me at having 219 grams of carbs, which shouldn't make me feel as bad. So, spirits. If you're gonna drink to excess, anyway, if you're gonna have just one glass of wine or whatever, yeah, you can do that, but, you know, you're still, you're still gonna be eating into your calories and it's, it's not ideal. I would always advocate, if you're dieting, spirits are the answer, basically. Uh, and just being sensible with that. And if you can, having Diet Coke or Coke Zero, or like vodka, Coke Zero, or gin and slimline tonic, or, you know, just maybe just enjoy a nice whiskey on its own um, with a bit of ice, stick to spirits, and you can definitely continue to drink whilst you're dieting. That being said, in terms of the number of calories, which we've just talked about, um, obviously that's one detriment to drinking. Obviously, it eats into your calories for the day. However, there are a couple of others. So, one, empty calories, empty cows. Two is, um, so the body we use it as an energy source. So, I think, when I was doing my research on this, I can't remember now, your body tends to take straight into the bloodstream around about 20% of the alcohol that you've drunk. The rest of it just kind of goes into your system. So it'll kind of hit your brain, etc. The rest of it will just go into your system and be used as an energy source, as the first energy source. So instead of metabolizing the fats, your body will start to use the alcohol as a source of energy where it can and I was trying to convert it into glycogen, it will just try and utilise um, the alcohol as a first port of call for energy. Um, so you're just not going to be burning you know, the fats that you want to, basically. So that's number two, so that's one slight side effect. Number three, it lowers testosterone. So obviously testosterone is a massive, massive factor in... Um, losing fat is the reason why men tend to have, or actually as an average population, definitely do have less fat on their bodies as a percentage of their body weight than women do, purely because we have more testosterone in men. And it also allows us obviously to build more muscle as well, testosterone. So that is why you tend to see guys obviously have more muscularity and less body fat. Uh, it's an unfair world, but it's kind of just how it is. So if we're drinking, it tends to lower your testosterone, and obviously that's gonna be a slight inhibitor in terms of you hitting your goals. And then number four, I think I had, well, yeah, this is the last one. Lose inhibitions. 
So let's say you've been, you know, we've done all the working out, you know how many calories you're allowed to have um, after your four glasses of wine and you're like, oh, it's 50 grams of carb. After you've had four, uh, your four glasses of wine, you know, a bottle and a bit, basically, four big glasses of wine, do we really think we're likely to stick to that 50 grams of carbs or are you going to go for that big fuck off juicy kebab on the way home? It's probably going to be the big fuck off juicy kebab on the way home and not give two fucks about it. So that is obviously a massive one. It just you just don't care about your diet at that point. You kind of like life's you know life's too short to be doing all this dieting and all the rest of it. Why am I even bothering? I'm enjoying myself. I want to eat. I want to eat my McDonald's on the way home or whatever. Um, so that's what you're gonna do. So yeah, I'd say there are four apart from the empty side, uh, empty calories part. Those are three other reasons why you might not want to drink uh, whilst you're dieting. However, with all that being said. Everything in moderation. If you drink gin, not in excess, you know, you're still going to have plenty of calories. You're not going to give your body that much gin to metabolise, really. Um, your testosterone isn't going to be lowered that much, really, in the grand scheme of things. In fact, it's been proven that like a glass of wine actually is beneficial for health. In pretty much everything, every study ever done, for some reason, like one glass of or one or half a pint, sorry, a small glass of wine or a half a pint of beer or something like that, or one shot of alcohol a day, actually is a actually beneficial to the to the system for whatever reason no one seems to know exactly why um so yeah you have it yeah so back to this so it's not really going to lower your testosterone that much by having you know your gin and you're probably not going to lose your inhibitions if you you know only having single gins with slimline tonic you know plenty of tonic in there so you're actually still hydrating your body at the same time you're probably not going to get too fucked and you know you're not probably going to feel like, oh, I really want that kebab. And instead, you might actually kind of think a bit more logically and go, actually, I've got a bowl of pasta from yesterday, which I was going to have for tea tonight anyway. I'll have that when I get home, and that'll do. Um, so, yeah, alcohol on a diet can be done. Just be sensible. So, guys, that wraps up this video. Um, hopefully, it's been interesting and useful. Maybe I'm hoping you've taken something from it anyway. Um... It's, you know, I've covered a range of topics to do with diet. I'm hoping it's made it clear, especially if you're a bit of a beginner and don't know really where to start in terms of how to, you know, get the body of your dreams. Hopefully this has helped a little bit. Um, if you've got any more questions, obviously please post in the comments below. I um, haven't had a lot of comments so far, but if you do post below, I'm sure I'll get back to you and sort of give you my thoughts on um, any questions you may have. Also, just let me know what you think, because what was useful, what was interesting, what would you like to have seen a bit more on in terms of diet, uh, was there anything I left out? Uh, let me know, it'd be interesting to, to see and maybe I can do another video in the future about whatever topics you'd like to see. Um, and just in general, it doesn't even have to be diet, just anything, what would you like to see sort of fitness, health, nutrition based um, from me. Um, so that's it, thanks ever so much for watching this Diet 101 big. I know it's been well, both of them. I know they're quite long, so thanks for sticking with me if you're still with me, if you are still with me. Um, please like, comment, share and subscribe. Um, I've had a few more subscribers the last sort of week or so, and it means a lot. And um, I'm going to keep putting out these videos. I'm really enjoying doing them, and hopefully you're all taking something from it. So I'll see you all next time. I don't know what the next video is going to be on, but we'll see. Anyway, take care. Have a good weekend. Much love.